While the whole world is keeping an eye on the assembly of the ITER tokamak, hundreds of engineers and scientists are working in the ITER member states to prepare for machine operations. The activity is intense. International collaboration with institutes and research centers has been ongoing for years. Only one kilometer away from the ITER site, the CEA Karagash Research Center hosts a historical first, the first tokamak that has operated with superconducting magnets and actively cooled plasma facing components. Torre Supra started operating almost 35 years ago. Considered a medium-sized reactor, Torre Supra held the record for plasma pulse duration for almost 20 years with a 6.5 minute shot achieved in December 2003. The lessons learned constructing and operating Torre Supra have largely contributed to the definition of ITER. In 2013, ITER took the decision to start a plasma operation with a tungsten diverter. At the same period, the CA decided to upgrade the Tov Supra Tokamak to an x point Diverter 2 based on the same tungsten design and technology as the one foreseen for ITER. Soon after, CIA, the ITER organization and Fusion for Energy, the European Domestic Agency, decided to create a collaborative joint team to coordinate the test and the learning from this West experiment. This uh, integrated team uh, hold meetings every two to three months, either remotely or uh, at CIA premises to witness the activities of plasma experiments. We're now in the middle of an experimental campaign, and during an experimental campaign, we usually run a plasma operation from 8 in the morning to 9 p.m., and you have a plasma discharge every about 20 minutes. So the, the latest um, experimental campaigns here at West were really devoted to uh, study the impact of the plasma on the, um, uh, the either grade actively cooled uh, lower diverter. And so, for instance, we are trying to keep the discharges as long as possible uh, in order for giving to the uh, plasma facing components, especially the diverter, the time to warm up and go into thermal equilibrium with the plasma and then to study the effect on the solid surfaces. The ITER diverter is located at the bottom of uh, the machine and it's cr a crucial component for the, for the tokamak. It sustains the highest heat load in the machine. The ITER diverter is constituted of three main components, the outer target, the dome and the inner target. They are all the three mounted on a steel support structure and they are all actively cooled. The outer target is uh, manufactured by Japan and the inner target is procured by Europe. Within the framework of uh, this IOC and F3 cooperation, F3 procured 20 small scale diverter plasma facing units and CE installed these units, dedicated sector in the machine, monitored by thermal, diagnostic, and as well the inspection arms, which allows to inspect the components in between plasma operations. Thanks to that, uh, we are now able to monitor the evolution of these components under actual plasma conditions. And these tests are very useful and a very good complement to other tests usually done in high strength devices, because here it offers insights into the real um, life, the real lifetime of a plasma facing component in a real tokamak environment. So during a typical uh, experiment day at West, you have, uh, I would say, between 30 and 50 people here in the control room at the same time, uh, divided in, in, uh, in different roles. To run a um, typical plasma discharge here at West, um, first of all, you need to have uh, ultra high vacuum inside the, the, the vacuum chamber. Um, so this is, you see the pressure here is a few uh, times 10 to minus five Pascal. And the wall of the machine sits at 70 degrees Celsius, which is the same temperature that uh, the ether wall will, will, uh, will be during ether operations. And then we inject uh, a deuterium gas uh, inside, the, inside the vacuum vessel and uh, we run a current through, the, through, the, through this gas to have a plasma. So since we're talking about magnetic confinement fusion here, obviously the magnetic field is an essential ingredient and West has 18 uh, superconducting uh, toroidal magnetic field coils. Um, and this brings the magnetic field at 3.7 Tesla on the axis of the machine. But in order for them to work and in order for them to be able to maintain the plasma discharges for as long as several minutes, they need to sit at the crazy low temperature of 1.73 Kelvin. 
These are the typical time traces of uh, anomic plasma discharge here at the West. You see the white little spike is when we fill the vacuum chamber with deuterium gas before the plasma discharge happens. And then the pink part represents the plasma current once the magnetic field is turned on. Whereas in yellow you have the plasma density and in white you have the gas injection that might occur also during the plasma discharge to keep the plasma density at the desired level. It's important to remember that here at West all the plasma discharges that we carried out and that we have been talking about are deuterium plasma discharges and this is in order for us to study the behavior of, of this, type of, uh, this type of plasma. Whereas in ETA, uh, the ETA will carry out deuterium plus tritium plasma discharges in order for half the deuterium plus tritium fusion reaction and actually produce um, energy inside of the plasma. Nevertheless, running deuterium exclusively plasma discharges is extremely important because actually the difficult part of running a fusion device like this is not making the deuterium plus tritium um, fusion reaction happen, but is actually the control of the plasma behavior itself and of the heat loads on the wall of the reactor. West is a fundamental step in making uh, ITER operations possible in terms of um, plasma wall interaction and the testing of the technology for the ITER diverter, which is one of the most crucial components. Because the objective is actually to best extrapolate this observation to ITER conditions in order to predict the lifetime of the first ITER diverter.